Yep. Great. Well, welcome everyone to our Mentor Walks virtual conversation. I'm Adina Jacobs and together with Bobby Malab, we're the co-founders of Mentor Walks here in Australia. I want to start by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land across the whole of Australia and pay my respects to the elders past, present and emerging. We have people in this session from across our country and so I encourage you to learn the names of your tradition, the traditional owners of the land in your area and learn a bit about them. I'm in Sydney and the owners of the land here are the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation. Today is our eighth virtual conversation and before we get in the, into the details of today's session, I'd quickly just want to tell you a little about, a bit about the other sessions that we've done so far. Um, and you can find them all on YouTube. So if you haven't been in them or if you know somebody who would benefit from them, Joni can send you out a link afterwards and you can go and have a look there and share them. We've done Fear of Losing Your Job with Lindley Edwards, Driving Your Career in a Downturn with Claire Hatton and Greta Thomas, Know Your Strengths to Drive Your Success with Mim Bartlett, Get Your Idea Off the Bench and Into the Game with Karen Vaughan, How to Recession Proof Your Finances with Kate McCallum, A Budget Breakdown, What Does It Mean for You with Sherelle Murphy and Kate McCallum, and how to cultivate a positive mindset and stay motivated with Julie Dempsey. They've all been amazing. And again, if you haven't seen them yet, I urge you to spend a bit of time having a look at them. So today we're here with Jackie Abbott to look at a practical approach to networking. Jackie is a highly experienced coach and senior executive with an absolute passion for creating cultures within organizations that are supportive of diversity and inclusion. Over the last 25 years, Jackie's held corporate roles with organisations such as Allens, Ford Motor Company, Shell Australia, Orica, Arthur Anderson, EY, NBN and others. Jackie, Jackie's coaching focus is predominantly with women transitioning to already in executive roles, becoming a working parent, seeking increased flexibility and developing more sustainable careers. She's passionate about helping people explore their own potential and supporting them in their evolution. Networking comes easy to some people and not so easy to others. And today, Jackie's going to take us through some powerful exercises that help us understand our networks and how to leverage them. And over the last few years, as we've been running Mentor Walks in Australia, we've seen the incredible power of the network effect and how connections made through Mentor Walks have led to new jobs and amazing opportunities. So Jackie's session comes at a really great time for us all, especially in light of the career challenges that many of us have faced this year. Jackie, I'll hand over to you now and I'll be back at the end for a quick wrap up. Fantastic. Thanks, Adina. I'm going to now start sharing my screen so we can um, get straight into it. It's really exciting to be part of Mental Walks, this series, all of the different sessions that's been done and today to cover networking. It's really, in all the years I've been doing working on networking, it's so underutilised you can use networking to create opportunities that are aligned to you, whether it's now or for the future, but in all ways, it helps you being more effective and efficient. But before I begin, I would also like to acknowledge the traditional custodians on the land on which we meet, to pay my respects to the elders, past, present, and any emerging leaders that may be on the webinar today. It was interesting, last week was NADOC week with the theme, always was, always will be, which recognise that the First Nations peoples have occupied and cared for this wonderful continent for over 65,000 years. I'm presenting this webinar on the land of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. So networking is an integral part of my work as a consultant, in my practice as a management and executive coach, and in my corporate d &I roles that I've held across industry. It, it's interesting, actually, there's been a number of my corporate roles that I've gained through networking, not through any job advertisements, simply through networking. So what does networking create? It creates opportunity to source different information, to share similar experiences, to access new strategies and different and varied opportunities. So there'll be people on the call who are in roles in organisations. There'll be others who are seeking work. Networking gives access to information. And that information is vital in the environment in which we work, which is changing, and particularly if we think about COVID over the past year. So networking and connecting during COVID has been a little different than maybe it was in the past, and it's requiring different strategies and approaches. So if you think back, when we first moved to the start of COVID, as structures flattened, 
and everyone moved to work from home, remote working. And I know some of the states have moved back, but there's still many people still working flexibly in all states across Australia. So when we move to a more remote way, way of working, the result for employees is that networks often expanded and they can, you were able to connect across businesses far more easily and accessibly than you did before. Now, as COVID restrictions have continued, many of these networks have now reduced as we tend to focus more inwards, maybe we're getting a bit more tired as well. So I, I found with many of my clients that this continued remote working has been a challenge and they're finding it they're finding that they're having to do things differently and perhaps not in the style that they would like to do. So not being able to have those casual conversations as you get a cup of coffee if you're moving around an office. If you're looking for work, there's the challenge of connecting with new people remotely rather than for some people who would prefer to do it face to face. Many of my coaches have complained that they would much rather connect face to face. Connecting remotely seems oh, just a bit too formal for networking, particularly with people that they haven't met before. If you combine this with increased caring responsibilities, many of us are sharing spaces and continue to share spaces in the home environment simply, and simply managing through COVID with everything that is about COVID. It's not surprising that many individuals and particularly women are often feeling exhausted by simply managing work and life. So for some people, the addition of networking seems like it's on top of work. And that's just too hard because it's on top of work, it's extra time. And it, it does require additional energy to reach out and connect remotely beyond your immediate network. So hopefully as you're here today, networking will give us opportunity to access different ideas innovative approaches, strategies to manage both now and into the future. Everyone on this webinar is a networker. Networking is a skill that everyone on the webinar can either build or if you're a very experienced networker, maybe expand. The business environment is all about relationships and the primary commodity in relationships is information. I've been an active networker for many years. What do I use my network for? I use it for getting information. I use it to challenge my thinking. I use it to explore future possibilities, to connect and to provide connections to others. So what are the benefits of networking? It is that access to different points of view, different approaches, strategies, options. The business environment isn't, isn't stable. It's, it's not static. So we need to be able to operate and understand and hear different things along the way. It gives you an opportunity to compare or test your thinking or to share similar experiences. You can access information quickly through your network, which makes you more effective and efficient. And in terms of career opportunities, it can provide access to a more senior role, an expanded role, getting in on a project or a working group. It can give you access or entry into new employment if you're looking for another role. So today, the way the webinar is designed is to make it a very practical approach, which will help you explore your existing network, to share strategies, to expand and utilise your networks more strategically and align to what the purpose is that you want for your network. So my aim at the end of the webinar, we'll see how we go, is for everyone in the, on this webinar to find out that they probably have more people in their network than you ever thought you did. To understand how to create a focus in your networking that will achieve the outcomes you're wanting to achieve. And also for you to be able to identify opportunities where you can expand your network. So let's launch into it. What is networking? It brings together experience and knowledge. It's a more effective and efficient way of achieving outcomes in both the current and the future business environments. And absolutely, it's a way of progressing your career. There'll be a range of people with different networking experience on this webinar today. There'll be those on the webinar who network regularly. There'll be some who rarely network. And there'll be some who feel very comfortable to network whilst others have a sense of discomfort actually in the process. 
So to get an idea of where everyone's sitting on the webinar now, I'm going to ask you a question for our poll to better understand what it's like. You have three options. How would you describe yourself as a networker? Very comfortable to network? Or somewhat comfortable to network with others? Or three, less likely to network with others outside your immediate area? You'll have 20 seconds. Can you put in your response? And make sure you hit the submit button at the bottom. Okay, we have a look at the results. So most people see themselves in the middle, but as you'll see, that there are people on this, on this um, webinar who do feel very comfortable. They can easily connect with others. And there are others where it's, you know, it's, not, it's not so comfortable. So hopefully today we'll be able to meet the needs of a range of different people. So don't worry where you're at on the spectrum. We'll try to make it applicable to where you're at. Okay, so we'll move on. Right. Joni, my slide presentation has frozen. Okay. So, I, so it's on uh, the still on the poll. All oh, right, is it? No, yes. It's not ind indicating. All right. It's not allowing me to shift it. Uh, do you want to exit out of it? Stop. Yeah, and we're going. Yeah, let me just go back in. All right, we'll try it again, and hopefully we can just continue. All right, let's see how we go. No. Okay, so I might have to stop the share and switch to you, Joni, if you can get the presentation up. Sure. But I'll keep going though, and in terms of the next slide. So when I ask this question, I'll stop my share. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> which would be helpful. Um, when I ask this question, it's interesting, a number of words come out. So people say, oh, it's awkward. It's awkward. It's so much easier when I've met them. Now, yeah, it is easier when you've met someone that you already know. But how do you start that conversation? So how do you start it? Share what you're interested in. What are your strengths? Where could you add value? Where do you think you might be able to make a difference? It doesn't need to be complex and it doesn't need to be lengthy. Share something about you other than simply saying your job title or the industry that you work in. So for instance, in terms of my diversity and inclusion work, I might say, look, I'm really passionate about creating more flexible, diverse and inclusive workplaces. And that's the start of the conversation. So it's not saying what role I have, what my title is, it's simply sharing my passion. A lot of people during COVID have found that video meetings and doing it virtually seems very formal. So some ideas, how do you set up meetings whilst you're working remotely? The setup actually creates the scene for you. So if you're sending an email for a networking session, your email heading could simply read connecting. You might also add into the email section, you might add no prep required. And this would be exactly the same in terms of a video meeting. For some people, if you feel more comfortable chatting on the phone first, and that takes away that formality, that pressure, the face-to-face -face pressure, then start with this and use that as a way of leading into the conversation. Another idea in terms of a networking is to have a walking meeting with them. So they walk, you walk, and we chat as we're walking, which makes it less formal. In terms of relationships, networking's not about building necessarily, it can, but not necessarily about building deep relationships. It's about connections. You don't need to know an individual or know them prior to making a connection. That's fine. And remember too, that initial connection, particularly if it's at an event, may only be for a few minutes. It's simply working out whether there's something interesting that you'd like to connect further. 
So the connection is based on the sharing of information about yourself, what you're doing, what you're interested in. False. I don't feel this is not me, this is not my style. So networking is about being authentic to yourself and connecting and engaging in a way that you feel really comfortable about. I get asked the question often, are there personality styles that are better suited to networking? Not necessarily. It is all about being authentic. If you are more comfortable in doing one-on-one -on -one networking, then do one-on-one. -on -one. If you're comfortable in doing groups, work with groups. There is no set way of networking that is better or um, worse than the others. In terms of the value, what's the value I'm going to get from networking? Not sure what I'll get out of it. And the other question that's often asked is, I'm actually not sure of the value that I can provide to someone who's more senior to me. Networking's all about the exchange. And at times it might be more beneficial to one and the other. But in terms of those connectings, it's about both sides learning about each other, getting a different perspective, different ideas, that sharing of knowledge. So don't worry about a senior person and approaching them to network. I'm tired. This is just something on top of what I'm already doing in my work role or searching for work. What I would say is if you can really align your networking to current and future needs, your current and future needs, you'll gain information, perspectives, insights that will help you work more effectively and efficiently, which will save you time. Successful networking is not based on the number of people in your network. It's the quality of your contacts and the conversations. So large networks are not necessarily any more effective than smaller ones. What a successful network is, is ones when your connections are aligned to where your purpose is. So more planned and targeted networking is better use of your time than simply going along to many networking activities or events or doing networking calls. And you need to create a realistic plan for your networking, depending on what the outcomes are that you're wanting to achieve. So if you're looking for new job opportunities, you might be doing quite a bit of networking at the moment. And what is that networking for? To gain information, to seek different perspectives, to hear of opportunities that you may not even thought of, and to position yourself as someone who is in the market looking for particular roles. If you're attending an event for those people that are able to do the face-to-face, -face, and this can be either remotely or in person, look for events that target your level, your area of interest, and the speakers are aligned with those. With these events, even with remote ones, be on time or early if you can. Even with the remote ones, sometimes you can have the casual conversation at the start and may even get access to the speakers if you go in on, on um, an early, right at the very start. Some people see it as the networking is additional. It's, it's actually not part of my role. Um, networking makes you more effective and efficient. And the myth that networking is only, only relevant at certain stages of your career is false. Networking is relevant at every stage of your career. What it means is that your network will change depending on where you're at in terms of your career, what your interests are. So have you and are you reviewing your network on a semi-regular basis to see if it's actually relevant to your current situation? Joni, could we move to the next slide? I'll now dive into, oh, it's flipped around, this is interesting. I'll now dive into, so if everyone can look to one side, we're being very flexible in this, we can see what it says. Um, the networking, let's explore it further. So we're looking at both internal and external networks. So what is an internal network? It's within your business, within your area, sometimes if it's a large business, or for those people that are not in a business or run their own business singularly, it's your close contacts. So what is an internal network for? It's to build informal relationships between different individuals. What will it do? It will increase your access to resources and information. It'll help you achieve outcomes, which makes your work easier. You'll have connections between areas within your business, and it'll increase your ability to influence and raise your profile with different groups, whether that be within a business or across outside a business and it gives you access to opportunities. In terms of external networks, which is beyond your business, 
to other businesses. If you're in a large organisation, it could be in other areas or it could be outside of your business to another business or if you're looking for work, it could be across the spectrum. So what are, what's external networking about? It's again about building informal relationships, but this time with individuals outside your area or outside your business. It will give you different perspectives because sometimes these are in different industries and different areas and different strategies. Most importantly, it'll tell you what's happening elsewhere. You can use the information that you gain through these to increase your impact in, internally and accessing more resources. It'll give you opportunity to access maybe jobs or roles if you're looking for jobs and roles in other areas and it raises your profile. So everyone's network, as I've said, is unique and it'll vary between size between different people. So on today, what we're going to do is actually have a look at who's in your network and work practically through this process. So if we move to the next slide, Joni sent out the document to everyone and you'll have this. We're now going to start to populate it. So in the first column, part A, I'd like you to think of six individuals who are in your internal network. Now, remember we've talked about who those people are. You only need your first, the first name of those individuals. And if you could do that now, it's the first name, six individuals from your internal network. Don't take too long to think about because these are the people that you immediately think of. So that's important as well. Now can you add two more names from your external network? So in total, you should have eight names listed down there. We'll now move to part B. I'm going to ask you a series of four questions. And as I ask you these questions, can you think about how it relates to each of those individuals there? And I encourage you as we're working through this to just jot down using um, capital or initials or something like that to your answers to this so that you can go back and review. So first question, is the gender of the individual that you've got there same or different to you? All you need to work out is same or different. Second question, age, is the individual similar to you, younger than you or older than you? Just use S-Y-O. So similar to you, younger than you and older. And if you're really not sure, I'm very happy for you just to do a guess. Third question, does the individual speak a language other than English, yes or no? That can be in addition to speaking English, that's fine, but do they speak a language other than English? And the final question, how long have you known these, these individuals? And just do it in years and again, guess. Okay, Joni, if we can move to the next slide. I now want you to have a look at your responses and I want to ask you two, three questions that it can explore and make you reflect on what you saw. And let me explain first the reason why we have these pictures. So the picture and mental walks, uh, when you go on a mental walk, you go into beautiful countryside and you get to do that. So clearly I wanted to stay with the outdoor theme here. So we have one picture on the left. You can see that there's a range of um, lavender. They're all the same plant, all the same type of plant, but you know, they're different sizes, different shapes, but they're all of the same. 
Whereas if we look at the photograph on the right, there's a whole range of plants. There's a real diversity, different heights, different shapes, different colors, different varieties. So what I'm wanting you when you're looking at your network as it is, is, is your network like the picture or the photograph on the left, where it might be similar, but just a variant on similar, or is it quite diverse, the, picture, the photograph on the right? So here's some questions. Are there any patterns that you can see? Do you find that for some of those categories, you've got the same response? Are there any gaps where you haven't actually got a range of different people? How much difference is there across the groups that you have listed, across the individuals? And the question, are you accessing a range of diversity in different thinking styles and approaches? We know that when you have access to greater diversity, it will expand your thinking. It's linked to innovation, flexibility, your ability to be able to adapt to change. So let's explore networking further. We'll come back, we'll come back to your sheet. We can move to the next slide. And now we'll move to looking at the strategic, the operational and the personal networks, which will help you further identify and develop your network. So first of all, the operational network. So what's an operational network? It's about assisting in managing your internal responsibility. So the things that you have to do now, what you need to do, whether you're looking for a new job, whether you're doing your role, what does it do? It gets your work done more efficiently. The contacts you have in here, mostly internal, are orientated towards the current demands of what you have at the moment, your current role or what you're looking for. It is about building strong working relationships. Now, one important point to remember for operational networks, particularly for those people who are in roles, but it probably applies as equally to people outside, is that job title doesn't always identify who an individual stakeholder is and who you should connect with. There are many others that don't have the title or the status, but what they do have is they have access to broad information, external connections, innovative approaches. So if you're currently looking for employment, think about what will help you now in your search? What information do you need? And then who can provide this for you? And think beyond the in initial people that you would think of. In terms of your personal networks, and what is a personal network? It's about enhancing your personal and professional development. So a personal network, the purpose of that, it gives you referrals to useful information and to contacts. The contacts, often external. And in a different way, these people are orientated towards your current interests and future potential interest. Now, many of the people in your personal network may have absolutely nothing to do with your current work. The power of the personal network is the referral potential. So when you're thinking about a personal network, how many People on, on the webinar play in a sports team, have external hobbies, have interests. How many people on the call, ha on the webinar have children? Mega place to network, mega place to connect with different people. All of these opportunities are endless. One of the funniest things is when you, and I've been caught doing this myself, suddenly meet up with someone at a work related activity and see someone that I know from out of work that I maybe have known for a long while and suddenly say to them, what are you doing here? And they're saying, well, what are you doing here? And we've both been working in a similar area or industry, but we haven't talked about it outside of what we do outside the workplace. So this is one of the areas where most people have contacts which they're not aware of and it's underutilised. And finally, strategic networks. These are connections to different people that provide support both for your current and your future priorities and challenges and the opportunities you're seeking. As your needs change and the business environment continues to change, your network contacts will change. The strategic network, which can be incredibly broad, provides an opportunity to connect with individuals that have really diverse backgrounds and views, maybe work in different industries, different types of roles. The key to this good strategic and an effective strategic network is the leverage. 
It's that leverage in being able to access information, support and resources from one sector of the network to achieve results in another. So it may be that one of someone you're connecting with in your network actually doesn't have the information you're looking for. However, they may have someone that they do know that they could connect you for or tell you about that person. And the same applies in your personal network. It's interesting, the research says that what differentiates a leader from a manager is their ability to figure out where to go and to enlist people and groups to get there. In other words, how they use their network. All right, if we can move to the next slide. We're going back to our, our network activity. So you've completed part A and part B. Now, can you complete part C? And just put a tick. Now, you may find that some of the individuals you've listed fit more than one category. In fact, they could fit all three. So if you can go through now and indicate whether the individuals in your operational, personal, or strategic network. And we're just about to move to chat rooms, but I've got two questions before we start that to, to guide your focus. So have a look at what you have, what you found, and work out from what you see there, where's your current focus? And then the next question is, is this where you want your focus to be? Where could it be? We're now going to move to breakout rooms. And if we can move to the next slide, Joni, I'll share what we're going to talk about. So this is an opportunity for you to network. And there's a fantastic range of people as part of mentor work. So it should, it should be really, really effective. In terms of those breakout rooms, three things. Everyone's going to get an opportunity to speak. You've got 20 minutes, so we'll make sure that there's enough time. First of all, can you introduce yourself? But this time, and maybe you do it already, but if you don't, can you do it by sharing what your passions and interests are, maybe what your strengths are, rather than saying the area of industry you work in or your title? Can you share any network insights from what you've seen in your network, both current and future, if you're comfortable in doing that? You certainly don't need to share any of the names, just what you saw, what you're looking at, does it fit what I'm looking to do now and into the future? And the third one, and this is, a, this is the exciting one for me, is what is your network ask? So what are you asking this small network that's in your breakout room about who you would like to connect to, the type of person, maybe the area that they work in, and to see what the network can offer you? All right. So that's, that's the task and there, can you make sure in your groups, and we're looking to have group sizes, I think around four, can you make sure that everyone gets an opportunity to be able to share that? Just the three areas of um, the three questions that we had there. Fantastic. Well, hoping that you were able to hear about others' networks and find similarities and differences, but also perhaps some assurance too that everyone can learn, everyone can change, and it's it's an ongoing process. It's not a it's not a fixed one, and I'm hoping that everyone did their ask and you now have at least one more person that you can add or source out in terms of your networks. So to summarise, so in terms of being a really effective networker, plan your focus. What is it you're wanting to achieve? So what are the outcomes? And does it align to both your current and your future purpose? Don't overcommit. You don't, remember, it's not a numbers game. So work out what actually targets to your focus and your purpose and that networking is a part of work. In terms of the relationships, remember we're talking about ongoing relationships. It's not at a meeting that it's always going to be equal. It will change over time. And the last point before I come to the end is stay curious. If you're curious and you seek out those other views and you really listen to those other views, you will hear different approaches you will pick up on different information and different strategies. And finally, ask to connect. Don't be afraid, ask the question. If you have someone that is too busy, the next question you ask them after you've, after you've said that is, 
I really enjoy what you're doing. I understand that you're busy. Do you know anyone else that does this type of work or works in this industry or has that there that I would be able to connect with? And, my, and more often than not, they will be able to say a name, an area, maybe an organisation or someone that you can connect to. Now, if you've got any questions, please put them in the chat box, I think, Joni. Is, it, is that the best way of doing it? That's the best way, yes. Okay, and we'll be able to respond to those after the webinar. I'll now hand back to Edina. Thank you so much, Jackie. God, I've got a page full of notes of things that I want to go back and I want to pull out that um, sheet and spend a bit more time really examining my internal and external networks. I think there's a huge value in that. And there's a lot that you said that really resonated, but some of the key things for me were that it's all about the exchange. I think a lot of people, especially those who are early in their career, feel like they don't want to ask because they don't have anything to give, but that's just not true. Everybody mm -hmm has something that they can share and everybody has some insight that they can that they can share. It's all about exchange of information. You're 100% right. And the other thing as well that you said that really jumped out at me was that it's important to review your networks regularly to make sure that they align with where you're at and, and what you're trying to achieve. I think everybody gets so carried away with doing that they don't take enough time to step out and actually look at things from above and understand where they where they are so thank you I, I appreciate all of that so much and you've definitely given me quite a few things to think about so everybody I hope you had a valuable experience today and that you've had some time to talk to some interesting people and share your ideas if you've been to one of these before or if you've been to one of our walks you'll know that we're asking everyone to do one thing big or small for another woman after a mentor walks event and it could be something as small as checking in with someone who you thought looked maybe a bit unhappy or something as big as calling out an injustice publicly when you see it. But it's really important that you just do one thing to support another woman and that, that effect carries on and supports a lot of people around you. Um, please have a look at Facebook, Instagram and our LinkedIn pages to see what's coming up next and have a wonderful evening. Thank you again, Jackie. Pleasure. Bye, everyone.